the Milton Berle Show. <laughs> The Milton Berle Show with Bert Telton, Jack Albertson, Arnold Stang, Mary Ship, Arthur Q. Ryan, Roland Winters, our singing star Dick Farney, the music of Ray Block and his orchestra, and yours truly, Frank Gallup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we dedicate our program to the great outdoors. We now bring you a man who spends most of his time in the great outdoors. He, too, can't find an apartment. And here he is, Milton Berle. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Gallup, are you kidding about me not having an apartment? It's easy to get apartments today. Really? I mean... <laughs> I, there's a lady who hasn't got one over. I have an apartment. All you have to do is swear to the landlord that you're not a veteran. My, uh, my new apartment is lovely, though. I have to share it with a pet shop. Not bad. $40 a month and all the kennel ration I can eat. Burl, you live in a pet shop. Sure I do. Didn't you know? No, I just got wind of it. <laughs> <laughs> wind of it? Oh, brother, this is murder. Are you, uh, are you thinking of breaking your leash? <laughs> leash? Please, Mr. Gallup. Don't stop me now. I'm rolling. You're rolling, right? Eh? Mr. Gallup, those corny jokes. You, the distinguished music commentator. Tonight you sound like the master of ceremonies at a Howard Hughes party. <laughs> Who did you say? Howard Hughes. I'm fine. How are you? Stop it! <laughs> Mr. Gallup, please. What has come over you? You're so, so jazzy tonight. <laughs> I mean, what happened? Well, Burr, last week I told that joke about symphony orchestras having railroad detectives to keep out the oboes. Remember? Remember, sure. There's still some shell on the floor. <laughs> what about it? What about it? Yeah. I, Frank Gallup, got a laugh. Well, <laughs> all right. Burl, when I heard that laugh, something snapped. Well, have it sewed up and let's get on with the show. <laughs> Shall we? Very well. Uh, throw me a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gallup, please, now get off the nest and let me hatch them for a while, will you please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your name and address, please. That <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we salute the great outdoors. At this time, thousands of vacationists are roughing it, running wild, leaping and bounding like the beast of the forest. They're in Wonderland. They're at Roseland. Mr. Gallup, please. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Tonight, hundreds of campers are sleeping under the stars or in the tent. At Roseland, it costs 10 cents to tents. 10 cents to tents. <laughs> 10 cents to tents. Take off that putty nose. We know you, Lulu McConnell. <laughs> Mr. Gallup. Dear Mr. Gallup. Stale Mr. Gallup, please. Let me go on. Ah, to be out in the open, far from the city's rumble. At Roseland, they dance the rumble. Mr. Gallup, please. Well, just set them up and I'll knock them down. I know, I know you. I know. <laughs> You're on, kid. Well, no, that didn't you remember? No, I know. It's all right. I like <laughs> There will be a new announcer on this program next week. Uh, I'm telling you, this is terrible tonight. It's, it's like beating my head against the walls. At Roseland, every, every third, third dance is a wall. Walls. I know. That does it. Ladies, how can you folks sleep with the lights on? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is a comedy show. We're not breaking this stuff in, you know. <laughs> tonight, ladies and gentlemen... I'm only kidding. <clears throat> Presenting our salute to the great outdoors that is America. Oh, no. Block. Block. Block, please. Just a fanfare. Thank you. <laughs> Camping grounds are everywhere. From the tinkling waterfalls of Yellowstone to the shimmering pines of Maine. From the waving... Oh, that's beautiful. Sequoia, the Alleghenies. This, then, is America. <laughs> block, block. Enough, block! Just something to set the scene, please. Yeah. <laughs> this happens every time the orchestra eats at Ruby Foo's. <laughs> Enough. Ladies and gentlemen, hark! 
the call of the great outdoors. <laughs> Thank you, Errol Flynn. <laughs> Our first visit to outdoor America is to, uh, to Sausalito, California. There, four hours ago, the champion lumberjack team of America, Floyd Tuttle and Big John Augustine, <laughs> set out to break the existing record by cutting down a giant redwood tree. We have word that the tree is about to fall. Take it away, Sausalito. <laughs> Not ready yet, eh? Send it back, Sausalito. Oh, and they promised me. Our next stop... <laughs> our next stop is to the lofty crest of Mount Whitney. There... Oh, excuse me, we just got word that the tree at Sausalito is ready to fall. Take it away, Sausalito. <laughs> Not yet, eh? Well, send it back, Sausalito. <laughs> we'll have to try them later. And now, take it away, Mount Whitney. There, a mountain climber, Mr. Leo Sperry, has reached the very top of this majestic mountain. Mr. Sperry, uh, Mr. Sperry, isn't it true that at this very moment you are higher than any man in the United States? That's right. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> That's high enough. And now, wait, wait. There's a flash from Sausalito. The tree is going to fall. Take it away. Timber! <laughs> that was a small one, wasn't it? <laughs> Take the applause sign down. Yes, Mr. Gallup, <laughs> the great outdoors is even the goal of the city dweller. To live high above the hustle and bustle of Manhattan is the dream of the young lover as he sings. Just picture a penthouse way up in the sky with hinges on chimneys for clouds to go by. <laughs> ah, Cynthia. Cynthia, I'll never forget those heavenly nights in your penthouse. We'd look up, and there it would be, the Third Avenue L. <laughs> I remember how you cried with joy when you signed the lease. At last, you had something you always wanted, your own gambling joint. <laughs> and Cynthia, what excellent taste you showed in furnishing it. Those Chippendale crap tables. The chintz ruffles around the roulette wheel to hide the wiring. <laughs> The rhinestone plunges on the pinball machine. But it was I who knew the home-loving Cynthia. How you love to putter around the kitchen, melting down lead to load the dice. <laughs> Mixing dope for racehorses. But it was the little things I remember about you, Cynthia. The shy little way you'd blackjack a big winner in the doorway on his way out. That quick flash of your perfect teeth as you bid a policeman's hand. Your tinkling little laugh when a heavy loser blew his brains out in the vestibule. <laughs> and then one morning, Cynthia, you were gone. You were gone, Cynthia. And so was all the money and the equipment. <laughs> ah, Cynthia, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, remember this. The gang will get you if it's the last thing we do. <laughs> because the next time I see you, I'll break every bone. When we're alone. Now, please, please, no applause. This starts my sinus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no matter where we are, we can always enjoy the great open spaces by just looking up to the blue sky above. And uh, as a surprise tonight, we have with us a, a man who spends most of his life high in the sky. He is that great aviator and smoke rider, daring, brave Al Smudgepot Hennessy. Mr. Hennessy. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. <laughs> uh, tell us, Mr. Hennessy, is sky riding dangerous? 
Yeah, well, fine. When you're up there in the sky, your wife worries terribly about you? No, she just sits home softly coessing. Oh, I see. <laughs> Smudge, did you have to go to a skywriting school to learn your trade? Oh, yeah, for two years. Every day we had to go up in the air and wipe things in smoke like I see the dog, the dog is Wolver, Wolver is a Bow Wow. <laughs> That sounds easy. Oh, gracious, no. No? Oh, no, I had my aggravations. You do, huh? Yeah. One day I spelled the word Pepsi-Cola wrong, and the teacher made me go up in the air and write it 500 times. <laughs> well, when did that happen? Well, you remember the great fog of 1927. Oh, so that's what it was. I didn't want to bring it up, you know. I don't want to bring up the subject of crashes, but have you ever been in real danger? Well, once I got into a terrific tailspin. A tailspin where? On a piano stool. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm hotter than Mr. Gallup tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and funnier. I, uh... <laughs> I'm speaking... <laughs> I'm speaking of flying, Mr. Hennessy. Uh, Smudge, have you ever gone into a dive? Oh, Mr. Pearl, will <laughs> No, I didn't. I mean, I'm sorry, I mentioned it. In conclusion, I'm sure we'd all like to know when, in your opinion, aviation will be perfectly safe. Aviation will be perfectly safe when they eliminate the wide to and from the airport by automobile. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Smudge Pot Hennessy. You were grand, absolutely grand. <laughs> Burl. I know, I know, Mr. Gallup. Who am I tonight? Oh, Burl, no one appreciates the great outdoors more than the Girl Scouts. The Girl Scouts, that's yes. true, that's true. And tonight, you're the intrepid leader of a Girl Scout troop, Mildred Burl. I'm Mildred Burl. Yes, and you're leading your troop through the woods. Miss Burl, Rita isn't in line. Rita? Rita, you get right back in line. <laughs> now, girls, girls, gather around me in a circle, please. See if we're all here. There's Amy, Alice, Gwendolyn, Martha, Anne, Irving. Irving? <laughs> Hazel Leuvendral. Will you put down that false mustache? We're ready to go on, Miss Burl. Very well. Let me see. Have we everything? Flashlight, compass. Oh, heavens, oh, dear old fudge. I have to go back. You girls, keep going. I'll catch up with you at the filling station. That was Ray Block and Orchestra playing Red Silk Socks. <laughs> It would have been stockings, but it wasn't long enough. <laughs> and Ray, that sounded swell. You're really, you're crazy to want to learn how to read music. And now, <laughs> to continue our salute to the great outdoors, we present... Outdoors Forum tonight. Outdoors Forum tonight. The question, will Times Square become a national park now that the bookies have left? Thank you. Let's have some questions from the audience. Let's begin with this gentleman in the aisle plucking his eyebrows. Uh, yes, sir? Mr. Burl, I came all the way in from the northern New Jersey woods just to shake you by the hand. May I, sir? Why, of course. There you are. Thank you. Now you've got poison ivy, too. <laughs> Thank you. Now we can start from scratch. Next question. This, uh, this young man, this young man with the loose garter belt, a uh, young man, what is, uh, what is your name? My name is Andre Castellanos. <laughs> Andre Castellanos? I'm the real one. The other one's a phony. Yeah, he is? Yeah, he just took the name since I become popular. I see. Well, I'll let him have it. I'm going back to my maiden name. And uh, what was your maiden name? Lily Pons. <laughs> All right, Lily, tell us. Uh, what is your question? Uh, do you think I should go on a camping trip in the mountains? Well, I... I understand it's pretty dangerous up there. Oh, it's... You know, mountain lions and bears, they could attack you. Yes, well, but... Well, why should I drag myself up there just to be clawed to death? If you feel... What are you suggesting a mountain for? I didn't suggest... I didn't do you nothing. What do you got against me? I haven't... What, are you bloodthirsty or something? Look, I... Sure, what's the life to you standing there fat and safe? All I said... What do you have to send me to the mountains for? Do it right here. Kill me, go ahead. Kill me. <laughs> Please, please, don't make a scene. Now, if you have a question to ask me, ask it. Okay. Do I smell from onions? <laughs> please, no personal questions. Let's hear from the fair, fairer sex. You, madam, with the hot towel on your head. 
What is your name? Tallulah Feeney. I'm a homemaker. Yes, and you have a question concerning outdoor life? Yeah, how can I stop my husband from being so nuts about fishing? Your husband is crazy about fishing? Crazy. He won't even step into the bathtub without a pole and a can of worms. Fishing in a bathtub? Well, that's ridiculous. That's what I thought. Till the other night, he'd come out drying himself with a flounder. Well, that's silly. The equipment he buys. You should, you should see his high hip boots. They're high? When he pulls them up, I gotta cut out two holes for his eyes. Well, he sounds well equipped. Last week, there was a run of fish. He went right in and caught him with his hands. You know them little shiny fish? Smelt? Pretty bad. He did it. Once he went on a big fishing party. That taught him a lesson. What happened? A guy in the next boat hooked him and pulled him in. Really? Yeah. They took a picture later. It shows the guy who caught him holding my husband by his feet. Well, that's awful. Uh, when did your husband come to? The next day. He was on a scale at the Fulton Fish Market. You went down to get him? Yeah, he cost me 59 cents a pound. No kidding. They sure cleaned him nice. <laughs> what patience. He can sit for hours with his feet dangling over the side of the pier fishing for lobsters. No luck? No toes. D is he still a fishing fan? Not after his last trip. He come home after being gone for two weeks. Did he catch anything? Yeah, from me. Across the mouth. Thank you very much, Mrs. Feeney. Thank you. Thank you. And now, and now in tribute, in tribute to that great vacation spot of millions, Coney Island, let us all join in and sing. Oh, I wish I was on a sea beach local Sipping on a coca coca Look away, look away, look away, Coney Isle Oh, you push and shove, but it's way to fight And just to spend the day at Brighton Look, look away, away, look away, look away, Coney Isle Then we wish we were in Coney Hooray Hooray. At Coney Island, hot dog stands will fill ourselves with relish. Away. 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 Down south in Brooklyn. Away. 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 Down south in Brooklyn. Here's our young South American singing star, Dick Farney, to sing his latest recording. I wish I didn't love you so. My love for you should have faded long ago. Wonderful, Dick Farney. 
Hey, oh, boy, what a voice. Boy, just to be outdoors, just to... Speaking of outdoors, that's what our show has got the theme about. I was completely worn out one summer from overwork, and I had to get away from everybody, so I rented a little mountain cabin in upper New York. And I remember how happy my family was that first morning. Because... <laughs> Milton, listen to that bird. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, dear, there's something wonderful about a bird. You should know, Pop. You got plenty of them in Vaudeville. Quiet. <laughs> Look, Junior, we all came up here for a rest. Why don't you lie down? Lie down? I do that every day at the psychiatrist. I'm getting couch happy. <laughs> Quiet, Junior. Go outside and play. Hit your head on the rocks or something. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is peace and quiet. In a mountain greenery... What's that? Look, dear, it's Sam and Martha Harrison. Sam and Martha Harrison? No, no, quick. Everybody, lie down and pretend we're dead. Oh, that's Sam Harrison and his crummy jokes. That's why we ran away from New York. Now, Milton, be nice. Come in. Surprise! <laughs> Hiya, Sam. Hiya, Martha. Hello, Sam, Martha. Well, well, and little Junior, what's the good word? Wow. Junior! <laughs> Sam, you, uh, you left your motor running outside in your car. Oh, I know it, but we can only stay a minute. Martha and I are on our way to Albany. I said, let's stop off and see the birds. Isn't that what I said, Martha? Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for dropping in, Sam. So long. So long, folks. Oh, say, Milton, I almost forgot. The reason I stopped by was to give you a joke for your program, wasn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Sam, your motor is running. Well, this will only take a minute. Two Swedes were playing pinochle. Sam, your motor is running. So the second Swede says, what time is it, Pat? And he, Pat. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. They were Swedes. <laughs> they were Irishmen, weren't they, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Sam, your motor is running. So the first one turns to the... No, it was the second one. Sam, your motor is running. Now, here's the punchline. Sam, your motor is running. <laughs> Get this. Pat turns to Mike and says... <laughs> he said... <laughs> What's the matter? I forgot the joke. <laughs> Sam, it's getting dark. Yeah, I guess we'd better go. Well, it was swell seeing you all, wasn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> so long. Oh, thank goodness they're gone. Wow, that was close. For a minute, I thought... Surprise! Sam... Milton, you were right. I should have turned off my motor. You mean... I'm out of gas. Out of gas? No. I got it, Pop. Why don't Sam and Martha stay over until tomorrow? No! <laughs> Junior, you know, a good night's sleep up here will do us good, won't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Sam. You're in luck, Milty. I'm loaded with jokes. Sam. Now get this. Two old maids checked into a hotel. Sam. You'll love this one, Milt. You can clean it up for the radio. Sam. <laughs> So the bellboy answers, just one towel to a room. <laughs> Sam, look, it's morning. You can get your gas now. Oh, say, that's right. Uh, Martha. Yes? I've got to finish this joke for Milty. Will you take Milty's car down to the village and get the gas? Yes. Wait a minute, my car. Now, about that joke. Sam, start packing. She she'll be right back. Oh, it'll take her hours. She can't see a thing without her glasses. <laughs> Sam, you get those clips. You shouldn't let her drive. Oh, I never let her drive our car. Sam! So the Irishman says to the bellboy... Sam? No, no, it was the two old maids in the hotel. Go to Albany. One asks the bellboy for a towel. Go to Albany. He answers, one to the room. Go to Albany. She says, one... Sam. So this window washer is looking through the chorus girl's window. Go to Albany. Suddenly the window opens. Sam. And one of the chorus... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Someone's driving up the road. <laughs> well, Martha's back. So this window washer says... Sam. Well, hello, Martha, dear. Have trouble finding your way back? Yes. <laughs> got the gas, Sam. Well, so long. What's, what's that? Someone's nailing something on the door. 
Excuse me, I'll have this sign up in a second. Sign? Wait, what is this? I'm from the health department. This lady here, ain't you the one that was just in town? Yes. Well, uh, look at her face. She's got measles. Measles? Yes. <laughs> this is a quarantine sign. No one leaves the house for two weeks. Two weeks with Sam, not me. You're not keeping me in here. You leave this house and you go to jail. Jail? Jail? No visitors. Perfect rest. Take me. Take me. Coming to jail with Daddy Junior? Yes. Yeah.